Earth. The seventh planet. The sacred number seven. Seven days in the week. Seven days of Genesis. Seven tablets of creation. A case could be made for historical coincidence, but not to Zechariah Sitchin. This kind of numerical repetition points to more than just legend. Whichever way you look at it, the facts about this tenth planet, known as Nibiru, are nothing less than astonishing. In ancient Mesopotamia, the secrets of astronomy and other celestial knowledge are kept carefully guarded, studied behind locked doors by an exclusive society of priest astronomers. Cylinder seals like these are the only surviving record of these carefully guarded secrets. This clay tablet carries the print of a cylinder seal about 4,500 years old. It depicts the god Enlil, granting the plow to humankind, ushering in the age of modern agriculture. On closer inspection something completely remarkable can be seen. A detailed depiction of our complete solar system, configured identically to that known to contemporary science today. With the sun prominently figured in the center, each planet appears in its correct position and relative proportions to the other planetary bodies. But, on the outskirts, is one additional planet. A tenth planet not currently located by astronomers of our modern times. Astronomers around the world are on the lookout, for this elusive celestial sphere. As a growing body of physical evidence indicates, Planet X does, in fact, exist. Welcome to the WTF Files, the ultimate aim of all science to penetrate the unknown. The greatest mystery is right here, right under our feet. These are the stories that will make you say, WTF. The story of this planet, as told by the Sumerians, on their seven tablets of creation, begins four billion years ago, when our solar system was much younger, and our home planet Earth did not yet exist. The surviving historical records of the Sumerians, reveal the story of an intruder planet, planet Nibiru, which appeared out of deep space, drawn into the center of our solar system, by the planetary pull of Neptune, Uranus, Saturn, and Jupiter on an opposing orbital path with the seventh planet, a planet referred to in Sumerian records, as Tiamat. Nibiru's new orbit around the Sun, placed the two planets on a collision course. Sumerian cosmogony answers many puzzles that still baffle modern science. Central to it, was the tale of a celestial collision. As the two planets drew near, one of the satellites or moons of Nibiru, crashes into Tiamat, cracking the planet. The subsequent collision smashes half of Tiamat into pieces, completely breaking the pieces into what develops mostly into the asteroid belt. The other half of Tiamat, becomes Earth. The Earth is thrust into a new orbital position, carrying with it Tiamat's main satellite, our Moon. Nibiru, the intruder planet, is cast into a permanent clockwise elliptical orbit, returning to Earth's neighborhood, once every 3,600 years forever becoming the twelfth member of our solar system. This tale of creation is the same throughout all the ancient cultures, and now becoming part of the scientific knowledge, that we can compare to the Old Testament, in the creation story of Genesis as well. In the aftermath of the collision, the biblical creator, Elohim proclaims, let the waters under the heavens, be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so, and Elohim called the dry land, Earth and the gathering together of the waters he called the seas. Two planets mingled together. The biblical passage of Genesis reads, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. If we apply the knowledge of the Mesopotamian text, to the biblical text, the correct reading of the book of Genesis emerges, especially in relation to waters. The Bible reads, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. 
and let it divide the waters from the waters, and dividing under the firmament from the waters, which are above the firmament. And Elohim called the firmament heaven. Upper waters, lower waters, what does the Bible mean by this? In the Sumerian ancient text, the Sumerians describe Uranus and Neptune, as watery planets. The conclusions of modern science in 1979, 1980, and 1981, when NASA's Pioneer and Voyager visited Jupiter and Saturn, with their many moons. During these missions water was discovered virtually everywhere. As ice on the surface. The Sumerians' ancient claim of water on Jupiter's moons Io and Europa, is also proven. But, the question remains. How did they know so long ago, we would find water on these planets? The Sumerian records also indicated water on Enceladus, and Tethys. Two of the moons of Saturn. And in that planet's spectacular rings. The findings of NASA confirm these ancient Sumerian assertions, giving further credence and clarity to the biblical quote, Waters above the firmament. Halley's Comet travels through space. And in itself a spectacular confirmation of the biblical claim of waters above the firmament. Nearly four billion years old, with a core half the size of Manhattan Island. This mystic traveler throws off water at the rate of 30 to 70 tons a second. With enough mass to continue its purge for thousands of years to come. In the 19th century, when astronomer Schiaparelli, announced that he had seen what appeared to be canals on Mars, he was instantly ridiculed. So too was the respected American astronomer Lowell, for making the same claim in 1916. It was not until NASA's unmanned spacecraft, visited Mars in the 70s, and again in the 90s, ample evidence of water in that planet's past is revealed. Images from expeditions to Venus and Mars, exhibited visual evidence of dry sea, lake, and riverbeds. Again proof of the biblical reference, waters above the firmament. Even Mercury so close to the Sun, seems to have had a watery past as well. The NASA report reads, we are forced to no other conclusion, but that we are seeing the effects of water on Mars, Venus, and Mercury as well. NASA, also now believes, that Mars may have once had enough water, to form layers several meters deep, over the entire surface of the planet. What was previously believed to be a dry and barren planet, unexpectedly emerges as a planet where water once existed in abundance. Mars joins Venus, Mercury, the Earth, and most recently the Earth's moon, in corroborating the Sumerian concept, of water below the firmament. Of all the elusive mysteries, the greatest is the riddle of life itself. How did it begin? And from what corner of the universe did the first emanations of existence arise? Was the seed of life carried to Earth from the planet Nibiru? As the ancient Sumerians believed. Contemporary scientific thinking cautiously asserts, that life arrives on Earth when certain chemical substances, crash onto the surface, aboard stray comets, early in our planet's history. Directed panspermia, is another scientific theory, that suggests life on Earth was seeded by a race of otherworldly beings, from possibly outside our solar system. And not by chance, but as the deliberate activity, of this otherworldly society. The Sumerians point to the Anunnaki who they claim as the creators of mankind, our own benefactors of life. According to Sumerian texts, the Anunnaki in advance of landing 445,000 years ago, originally send androids to scout the Earth. 150,000 years later, the Anunnaki themselves arrive, and create humankind. According to the Sumerians, the first human was created by the use of genetic engineering, and fertilization in vitro. Created in a glass tube, as depicted in the cylinder seal rendering. The first man was called Adam. Sumerian texts claim, Adam was the very first test tube baby. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, the Bible reads, Let us make the Adam in our own image, and likeness. But why? Sumerian documentation suggests the Anunnaki create humanity as a slave race. To assist in mining African gold for the Anunnaki, that they need to save the dwindling atmosphere of their home planet Nibiru. The Bible relates an incident of mankind overstepping the bounds of the Anunnaki, and the Babylonians attempt to reach the gods, by building an enormous launch pad in the archetypal story, the Great Tower of Babel. But what exactly is the target of their reference? According to Zachariah Sitchin, it is our neighboring planet Mars. 
home of the Anunnaki's port station, when en route to Earth. The Sumerian tablets refer to Mars as being a jump planet. Used to jump between Nibiru, and the Earth. This is said to occur every 3,600 years. But droid ships are still sent much more often. As a form of reconnaissance. To continue to monitor their creation. Humans. Mesopotamian archives identify the 12 members of our solar system, with specific symbols. Some like Mars, Earth, and Venus, are indicated numerically on this ancient stella. In Sitchin's words, we see the sun with its many rays. We also see a celestial being riding on the back of another animal, which is a symbol for the zodiac. We see the moon, and we see the earth, symbolized by the seven dots, which indicates the position of the earth from the outer limits of the solar system counting inwards by somebody flying into our solar system from outer space making earth the seventh planet from the outside we see earth with its crescent moon and the six-pointed star of mars the image reveals even more clues in this 4500 year old sumerian depiction two figures stand on either side of a craft the craft seems to again confirm the sumerian claims that the anunnaki did indeed arrive in a craft when they first arrived on earth what many today would call a UFO. Researchers now believe that Mars was habitable as little as 10,000 years ago. When the United States launches the Mariner and Viking spacecrafts, to explore Mars in the 60s and 70s. Antigenic structures resembling those on Earth, are photographed by both spacecrafts. This is a feature on Mars, that NASA nicknamed the Inca City. Here we see it compared with Soxahume on Peru. These are lines on the Mars surface. These are the Nazca lines in Peru. What was especially intriguing for researchers was the discovery of the face photographed on Mars. A clear representation of the visitors who colonized the planet in the ancient past, the Anunnaki. An independent researcher suggests in their reports that the orientation of the face and joining pyramids indicate that they were built in alignment with sunrise. At the time of the solstices on Mars, about 450,000 years ago. Could it really be, that a civilization capable of space travel, almost half a million years ago, visited this part of the solar system, to not only mine Earth's precious resources, but to genetically manipulate human beings for their own needs? Leaving behind monuments, not only on Earth, but on the Moon, and even on Mars as well. According to Zachariah Sitchin in his translations of the Sumerian texts, the ancient Sumerian people say, that is exactly what happened. Today, as humanity grows, our civilization is technologically able to venture into deep space on scientific quest of discovery. We have put a man on the moon, and have plans in 2028 to put humans on Mars. With this in mind, can anyone deny the very real possibility that members from a technologically more advanced world, may have visited our solar system thousands of years ago. Thanks to the work of Zechariah Sitchin, and the many others like him, who have studied the Sumerian texts, and biblical scriptures. Today, we know far more than we ever have about ancient cultures, and the life that came before us. Researchers believe we are now facing the 3,600 year mark the Sumerian people referred to. And according to NASA, Planet X may be here already not only affecting the outside planets, but now starting to affect the Sun, and the Earth as well. Scientists believe the climate change happening worldwide is a direct result of Planet X's magnetic energy, affecting our inner solar system. Photos being taken around the world, show that Planet Nibiru, is already within view, coming from the southern equator. Captured in the early morning hours, and sometimes captured at sunset. If Nibiru is already here, and being photographed, does this mean the Anunnaki are ready to make their return to this planet as well? To enslave us all over again? What do you have to say about this? Are you ready to kneel before the Anunnaki? And be a slave to an alien race? If what the Sumerians say is even halfway true, we all may have a real eye-opening moment, coming very soon. Leave us a comment below and let us know what you think. We always want to know what you have to say. Thank you for watching the WTF Files. God bless you all. These are the WTF files. Subscribe today 
and be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Thank you for watching the WTF Files.